Okay, let's start with a prayer. But want to give you, keep yours. <laughs> Lord, thank you very much that you are our Father. Um, we just want to admit again that there's nothing we can do in this class if it's not coming from you. Give us in our minds a picture of who you are. <laughs> that we can have uh, a real relationship with you by being together. Teach us um, and let us grow in our relationship with you. You know where we're coming from and each one's situation. And uh, Our aim is not only to know, have knowledge, but to grow in you. We ask you to guide us in that through your spirit. Amen. Okay. Week six. What keeps prayer from being answered? Um, day one. They say sin, especially not forgiving, is the first one. Um, and they uh, using quite a few verses there. Psalm 66 verse 18 If you had cherished iniquity or sin in your heart the Lord would not have listened. From this verse what keeps God from hearing our prayers as you say it's from not having some sin having things in your heart that you don't that you keep from the Lord instead of sorting out. Uh, it's a, again we, we can say sin and so on but actually it's your relationship. Hmm. If there are things that I and my wife didn't discuss, that I'm keeping from her, I'm not open and I'm not... And I, it happens a lot, especially when you are the guilty one. That's what it means. In, and if you keep that, the relationship is not open. Um, you, you, you can't hear him properly. Because you don't want to hear him. And, and he, and as the Bible say, if you listen to these words and these verses, he's not going to listen to you. Um, Isaiah 50, 1 and 2, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, or his ear dull, that he cannot hear, but your iniquities have made the separation between you and God, and your sins have hid his face from you, so that he, he does not hear. Um, so to say something about our attitude also, and, that, and we know that, that, that the iniquities can be taken away, and it is taken away, but we are the ones hiding it again. <laughs> and that makes, and what happens is you don't grow, you don't, you don't follow up, and that's uh, some, one of the reasons. 1 Peter 3 verse 7, Likewise, you know, husbands, live considerably or kindly with your wives, bestowing honor on your women as the weaker sex, since you are joint heirs of the grace of life, in order that your prayers may not be hindered. See, you know, it's even your uh, marriage with your wife, um, if you are not living con considerately with her, then you don't hear your prayers. You see, that's the attitude that you have with somebody affects your attitudes to God also. You can't say that you love your brother, you don't love your brother, but you love God. And you can't say that you love God and you hate your brother. I mean, that's the verses the Bible mentioned also. So, Matthew 6, verse 14 and 15. If you forgive men their trespasses, passes, then your heavenly Father also will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive your trespasses. That's a very strong thing. And you get it in different places. Even if they talk about forgiveness in the Lord's Prayer, if you don't for, uh, forgive me as I forgive. Um, and it, it goes together. It's just so amazing linked our relationship with one another and one and your relationship with God. If 
you're struggling with your relationship with people, you're struggling with your relationship with the Lord. Because actually in a somnistic way it's the same. <laughs> you, you remember I said that in three places the Bible says that the whole law and prophets are summarized in love God and love your neighbor. But three other places uh, it's also saying the whole law and prophets are summarized by loving your neighbor. Without saying love God. You see, that relationship with God and with your neighbor are mystically somewhere very much linked. So, your yeah, life is Christ as a church. Yeah, so and always, there's always a link. And, and relationship, because our, our biggest uh, commandment is love, so anywhere where relationships are not love, it, we are failing, we are sinning. Hmm. It's and, more, yeah. and it makes separation. And if you don't talk about it, you won't allow, you won't be able to avoid it always. But if you don't talk about it, put it in clear, there's something that hinders the relationship. If we stop forgiving, it is sin. God cannot hear our prayers. So what can we do? Jesus told us what to do. We can pray for whatever we need, but if we pray, we must forgive. This is not easy. Sometimes we cannot forgive by our own strength. We must ask God, uh, God's help. Sin especially, not forgiving, is the first thing which hinders prayer. We must forgive. Um, sometimes we even may think we have forgiven. But we, forgiveness is not just saying it. Forgiveness is a quite a deep thing. So work on forgiveness always with relationships. Um, yet there is still bad feelings between us and someone else. Jesus told us what to do. Okay, day two, asking for, for things to please ourselves. That's the second point on what is hindering prayer. If we are just asking things for yourself, if you are still selfish, you didn't get to the point where you say it's better to give than to receive. You are so busy with yourself and everything is about yourself. So even your mission work is about yourself. Even your love for your enemies is about yourself. Um, I mean, then, uh, then they don't hear the prayers. If your Bible reads, John 15, the 7 again, you know John 15 is a long vine, even yet we talked a lot about that. If I really live in Christ and His words live in me, will I just want to make myself happy? <laughs> if His Spirit lives in you, you won't, be a, you won't want to make yourself happy. You are living in, and your own attitude is to produce fruit. Um, James 4 verse 3, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions or to please yourself. Um, yeah, remember at least one of the verses of, of, of um, the more verses we can remember, any case is good. Um, the more of the Bible that we can have in our minds, it's all the better. This, because we ask for things to please ourselves, sometimes the problem is our reason for wanting something. This may keep God from answering even a good prayer. Sure, didn't think of that. It's an arch, so I didn't follow. Okay, sometimes the problem is our reason for wanting something. This may keep God from answering even a good prayer. We, we ask things to please ourselves. Uh, this is good, but why is he praying? Okay, this is just an example they give them. When we pray, we must ask, do I really want God to be pleased or do I just want to please myself? Um, because we are growing in this unselfishness. Um, thinking more about others than ourselves. We all are growing in it. So it's good to keep yourself asking yourself um, for what am I praying? And therefore it's also good, as we say, don't start with yourself if you pray. 
you start becoming in feeling and in connection with God so that He influences you and immediately you go on your knees because you can't do anything else. And you start from the right way because you start from Him, not from yourself. Um, Deuteronomy 3, verse 23 to 26. What did God do when Moses prayed that he might go into the land of Canaan? God refused to listen. He refused Moses' prayer for the sake of all of the people. Moses was a leader. He, has dis he had disobeyed God. The people must learn that when we disobey, we are. They say punished. I am a little bit careful for the word punishment, but, actually, but it is because of our sin that things are not going well. So you can call it punishment. But later on people are so afraid of punishment that they make this their goal to avoid punishment. And then you're doing the good things but not because you, for the right reasons, you're doing it to avoid punishment. So I'm always careful about punishment. Back the but it doesn't, it, it is so that the, the bad that happens to us is because of our own uh, accord. Or our doing also. Yeah, we, we deserve to be, to have, uh, not to go into the promised land, <laughs> if you put it in this context. If the Bible read, um, we have read 2 Corinthians 12, how many times did Paul ask God to take his trouble away? Oh, three. Three times. Mm -hmm. And did God take it away? Mm -hmm. No. Um, and they put it in connection here with asking for things to please ourselves. Um, it was not, uh, although we don't know what it is, that interesting. Matthew 26 29, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Now Jesus is praying. Um, you see, if you say, my Father, if it's possible, you also start with God coming to yourself, to your need. Let this cup pass me. It seems he wanted to be saved from being crucified, but if Jesus had not been killed, we could not have our sins forgiven. Would God have been happy with this? No. His great plan was to save this man from his sins. Um, did God say yes to Jesus' prayer, that he should not have to drink this cup? No. Um, and, but also remember, he prayed, Thy will be done. Um, he's praying. So, just be, as I say, just be careful. Not to, the second thing that can hinder your prayer is when you Myself is thinking of yourself. Uh, the third thing is not believing God. Praying but you don't believe God. That's, you can look at James 1 verse 6 to 8, you know that, that part. But let us ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave in a sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not must not suppose that the double-minded man, unstable in all his ways, will receive anything from the Lord. These words, these verses are quite hard. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, yeah, and again, it is not um, trying to avoid disbelief, but working with a relationship as our goal. We are going to grow in our faith and allow His Spirit to give us the faith that we need. James says such a man has two minds. He believes God with one mind, with the other mind he does not believe God. Such a man will not be able to follow God well. He will not get answers to his prayers. I am running through these things, but if there is something urgent you want to ask, you can still do that. Um, Matthew 17, verse 19 to 20. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out, that demons that they couldn't cast out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, 
you will say to this mountain, move from here and here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible. Um, they didn't have enough, they have little faith. Um, there's a difference between small faith and little faith. <laughs> because a mustard seed is small. <laughs> Um, it seems like there's a difference. If it's little, um, it's, it's doubt. Um, if it's small, you know, but you're not always um, maybe that convinced or whatever, but you know. Um, you, you, I just want to uh, make that difference a little bit. But sometimes we de do not believe God. We do not know what to do about it. How can we get faith? How will we get faith if we don't? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Exactly. And with that, we will do next in the next lesson. Okay. We're going to say more about how to grow in faith. And then the fourth reason, day four, is not going on in prayer, not continuing to pray, not be, um, how do you say in English, persistent in your prayers. You, you just ask something and it doesn't happen, you just stop. Although the need are still there, you don't express it anymore. You stop doing it, you're not, um, you gave up. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. In the language which Jesus spoke, it means keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Because seeking and knocking is part of our whole life. Keep on. Uh, continue with it. Uh, we will always have something that we seek, uh, things that we... Uh, keep a knocking on the door um, and then it is not for ourselves sometimes it is but there are things always that we are looking for we want to be with God and we want God to change the world and our communities or somebody else or whatever why does he delay um, is the question then God can answer our prayers only by changing us Sometimes God knows we are not ready to receive answers to our prayers. Uh, we, we, we won't really know what's the reasons, always. I don't think we will always, at least always we won't know. And sometimes we will never really know exactly how God works with me. Oh. But there are times that God don't give us the answers and He knows why. This is where the trust thing comes in. You give yourself totally on the altar and give yourself a way to him. Because we know he will do only good with me. Okay. Um, okay, sometimes God answers slowly because he wants to give more than we ask. They, they just try to give some reasons. Um, and they gave the example of Hannah praying for the child um, continued with the prayers um, and then they said there's another reason also Satan can keep our prayers from being answered for a while they give this uh, example from Daniel 10 um, prayed and ate little food for three weeks and he said that the prince of the kingdom of Persia hindered him to come the angel said. So they use that to say sometimes it's Satan himself that he does it. They don't stop praying, um, continue praying. And then day five of lesson seven is only revision. Um, look, most of the, the questions that I'm going to ask in the, in the test is coming from these revision questions. Uh, so look at them and make sure that you know, uh, know how to answer those questions.
was quick. Week six, can I continue? Three. Week seven, growing in faith. <coughs> now he comes to that question, but how, if I don't have faith, how do I grow in faith? Uh, growing in faith, we know we are busy with prayer. Um, how many answers to prayer can we get without faith? <laughs> Nothing. Well, some, get any. some people were healed by Jesus without having faith to do so. But um, that doesn't mean. mean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, many of the, of the people who were healed he said uh, it's because you were. Uh, you yeah, there was that side too as well. Uh, because of your faith. Um, I, they say the one thing how you can grow in faith is read and memorize God's promises. I mean, there are so many promises in prayer, full prayers in, in the Bible. And uh, giving some of the examples in the book, John 14, verse 13 and 14, Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 15 verse 7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Uh, John 15 verse 16 also, um, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear much fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. I mean, if you really are in trouble and you read again these promises, it does something to us uh, to hear it again. Um, yeah, how many times in these verses did Jesus say we could get answers to our prayers? I mean, many times. He said it six times. Uh, how do you feel when you know how much God wants to answer you? If you know God wants to answer us, He wants to have a relationship, He wants to um, use you. Um, uh, um, uh, Wim Sewell is a preacher on um, a radio tiger work, mm -hmm. and he um, says, if you trust God, He will always give you an answer and will be one of three things. Yeah. Or, <coughs> if you trust God, yeah. it will always be, He will always answer you and it will always be one of three things. It's either, either going to be yes, yeah. no, or have a little patience, please. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's exactly the things that we are talking about here. And I think. Faith, uh, doubt, will always be part of our lives. Don't um, try to, 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 to uh, live and show uh, others that you don't doubt. Be totally honest always, because doubt will always be part of our lives. To the promises again. And if somebody tells you, but I pray and I can't get it and say, I understand, I'm also dead. Put it on the table. Don't hide it and work with it. Then things happen in your life. Um, it's part of your struggle that causes you to grow. Mm -hmm. Doubt helps you grow. <laughs> If you handle it honestly with God, it helps you grow. It's, uh, it's strange, but it works that way. Um, and then, they do, uh, the other thing to grow in, in your faith is remember how God answered prayers for others. Uh, I mean, they, they've got five reasons here, but uh, you, will, you will see the five reasons there easily. You can read how we answer prayers for other people. Look at this the Bible, there's so many stories. Look at the story of Elijah. First God sent drought to make the people think. Then he sent fire on Mount Carmel. 
to answer Elijah's prayers. This is, was to show that he is a true, the true God. When Elijah prayed again, God sent rain after three years of no rain. James 5. Elijah was, they talk about Elijah in James also, James 5, verse 17, 16, 17 and 18. After 16, he said, the power, the, 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 the prayer of the faithful has great power. And he said, Elijah was a man uh, of like nature with our, uh, like the nature with ourselves. And he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth its fruit. I wish I had time now to tell you a few stories of this right from Mozambique. It's amazing um, how people who don't even know what to pray and how to pray. They say, uh, they just started talking to the Lord and saying, how deep trouble are you? And what is happening? Telling Him everything in a very simple way and how the Lord came in and miracles happened. Hmm. Amazing things. Um, I mean, let's hear these stories again. It helps us to learn our faith. Because it, the, the doubt is there and we need this. We need, in our weakness, we need to hear. We need one another's stories. Um, in the first place, we need to accept that we are weak and that we need the other stories. And then you go and listen for them, you look for them. Read John 11, 39, when Jesus was at his grave of Lazarus. What did Jesus do before he commanded Lazarus to come out? He prayed. Before certain moments, uh, before th important things is done, he went specifically to pray. They would go do greater things than, than he did. God promises to, to answer prayer for us as He did for Jesus. Look at, look us, uh, let us look at one more prayer, an, uh, answer to prayer in the Bible, Acts 4. Some disciples were put in prison because they preached about Jesus and how they, their prayers were answered. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole story again, but the, 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 the Acts stories are it's really amazing. Uh, even when Peter was in prison at the congregation, prayed for him, and now he came out. Day three, ask God to search your heart. And here is the honesty thing now. Um, if you want to grow, try to be brutally honest um, with your weaknesses and, and your struggles and your doubts. Um, uh, ask God to search your heart. Sin keeps God from answering our prayers. How can we be sure that our hearts are clean? Uh, can we need to remind ourselves time after time what is our position in Christ? That our righteousness and our uh, forgiveness is only through Him and we are forgiven. You see, you, you, uh, that God can search your heart and mostly it is when you are not in Him when, when you start trying things on yourselves like I said that, uh, like the example of the guy gave of the tree see, everything, see if everything on top of the soil is the good things that you are doing but the things, the roots and the things underneath the soil is the bad things that you're doing is most but the bad things are not your problem because you know it's wrong and you can you will tell anyone it's wrong but the problem is the good things that you do when you start looking at something at yourself and not at God you're not doing things in Christ and that's where Pride and all these things come in, and, may, and our position is not in Christ with Him. Um, 
we need to be honest. Uh, Jeremiah 17 verse 9, from these verses, who searches our minds and tries our heart? It's the Lord himself who searches our minds and tries our hearts. And then we note 1 John 1 verse 9, uh, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just and will forgive your sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know this verse, I think, um, in my heart, I think it's one of the verses that's very important. Uh, we ask God to forgive us. Oh, what's the verse? Uh, 1 John 1 verse 9. <coughs> We ask God to forgive us, but we must also make matters right with other people. Um, with the forgiveness thing, you need to go to the people also. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded or cheated anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. Um, because you need the forgiveness is not something only touching your relationship, it's also touching the relationships of people. So we need um, and, and the forgiveness will become flesh. It won't only <laughs> your mind. If you listen as you pray, God will search your heart. Okay, so search your heart, the honesty thing, uh, it helps us grow. Um, the more we can be broken, the more we will be able to grow. Um, we accept our brokenness, we can be able to grow. Ask God to increase your faith. Uh, is the day four, the fourth reason, uh, um, yeah, thing that, something that you, fourth thing that you can do to grow in faith. You ask God to increase your faith. Many times Jesus healed people, many times he, he said it was because of their faith. Uh, then Jesus answered her, oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed. Where do you think this woman got such great faith? What made her just believe? Um, the same with the disciples. The disciples had little faith, but he helped them. He made the wind quiet. Many times we feel like the disciples. They knew that their faith was small, so they asked for help. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the Lord. I mean, he gives it. Uh, and that's a nice uh, example. Um, there's no self-ability to faith. You don't have any ability to have faith. Faith is depending on the Lord. And confess it, say it, ask Mark 9, 23, 24, and Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. Hmm. That second part is actually for me even more important than I believe. <laughs> help my unbelief. Uh, you can ask God to your faith. In the fifth reason, use the faith you have. <laughs> um, we do not read that he gave them more faith. Instead, he showed them that even a little faith can do miracles. <clears throat> Luke 17 verse 6, what did Jesus say our faith can be like? It's like a seed. Um, is a seed a big thing? No, a master seed is very small. It becomes a big tree though. It becomes a big tree. 
And that's the secret. Pray for things which you can believe God for. Um, sometimes you... Actually, all the prayers is, is not something that you, you pray out of yourself. It's a spirit praying through you. So you sometimes ask things that you didn't think of asking. <laughs> and bigger than you ever thought possible. It happens. But they also say, if you are in a big struggle, pray for the small things first. And trust the Lord for that and grow in it then later on you ask for the thing the real things that the real objectives of what the spirit is urging in you um, but we need to grow in it we need to, to, to ask. so use the faith that you have um, walk with open eyes to your calling and what you should pray for and, and, and exercise, put it that way, exercises. When God answers your prayers for a small thing, rejoice that He has answered. I'm not good with this, um, personally. Um, I'm very scared to rejoice when the God do things through me. Mm. Because I know my weakness. Mm. So I'm actually very scared if the Lord is doing something for me, through me, I keep it secret. I keep mm. it, I only tell when it's necessary. Which is also fine. Um, but they say here, if God answers us more, rejoice in it. And he has answered, thank him for rewarding your small faith. And I don't think really that he's rewarding my small faith. He's just doing his work. <laughs> And I was the the the, the flesh and awesome. blood through which he did it. Yeah. Um, but if your mindset, are, 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 if you can exercise this mindset, understanding your role in what just happened, you cannot be proud. You 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 will know it's not you. Um, and the, re what the rejoicing is not that the God gave you something. The rejoicing is that He is doing His work. And somebody is maybe saved, or somebody is healed, or something happened that is good. And He will be glorified. So, and do that fully. Um, Okay, one time Jesus healed ten lepers, you know the story. When they saw that they were healed, nine of them went on their way. They never came back and thanked Jesus. Yeah, you can read the story in Luke 17. Only the one leper saw that he was healed and he came back. Um, I thank the Lord. So, the, f the, the five things is for growing in faith, as I mentioned here, is read and memorize God's promises in the Bible. It helps us to grow. Remember how God answered prayers for others. Look at the stories. Not the Bible stories, yes, and remind you of them, but also some stories happening today. Ask God to search your heart, an honesty thing. Fourth, ask God to increase your faith when you don't have faith. You just ask Him for faith. Use the faith you have. Grow in it, exercise it. Um, prayer, to, prayer together with others. Um, this is actually also very important. Um, dogs or pets? Or we, I, <laughs> I uh, had a sermon on this last Sunday from, from Ephesians 4. Uh, with this theme, it was quite nice to see that I it's <laughs> part of the, of the yeah we with this process. The unity, yeah. What have you done to make your faith grow? Ooh. Um, it's just asking the question. Um, how? What do you do to make your faith grow? Are you doing something? Because we really need to do something about this. 
We cannot just accept our faith just as a gift from God, not exercising it and growing in it. I just want to mention this. That's an that's a, no, that's interesting thing, because uh, it's in different faiths. My understanding of faith has always been in who he is and what the scriptures declare who he is. Uh -huh. But sometimes there's, you get the gift of faith, where uh -huh. this God just has this uh -huh. belief, this miraculous belief that no. <laughs> this thing's going to turn red or no, green. Yeah. You know, faith is a gift, but it's not, it's a gift for everyone. Everyone needs faith. And faith is not, he's giving it. And we don't take it for granted we need to grow in it. And what do we that do? Makes sense. I, answer that question for yourself. What are you doing to increase your faith? Because if the faith increased, you will see God working in the world and changing the world. And you are in the middle, but that's not important. Or in bringing cash money the way. <laughs> but you see it. <laughs> and that's what we want to see. Growing. Because God will show himself to the world through the faith of you. That he's giving you. But the more you grow your faith, the more your faith gets attacked. Interesting. So while growing in faith is not a nice process, no, it's, it's a struggle, um, and mm -hmm. there's lots of fights in it, yes. Okay. But I mean, it's not, uh, it's <laughs> totally worthwhile. It's not, no, no, you no, see no, something no. happens and somebody, uh, it means something for somebody. I mean, it's, it's so worthwhile to give your life for somebody. <laughs> but the guy selling his property to go and dig for to find a gym? If you want to join, if I sell that gym, that, 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 that. Yeah. You go and sell everything. You sell everything for that gym. That gym of truth. Okay, so, but we are praying together with others. Um, they start by saying Matthew 18, what we know. If you do uh, 18 verses 19 and 20. Again, I, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Um, yeah, that's basically the main uh, thing, and then we will make it practical. When will I, what will happen if we agree to pray with someone for a certain thing? It will be done. Um, I mean, that's why discipleship is so powerful. If you are together with somebody, one of you have a problem, for example, with one of your children, or a work-related problem, or a, a marriage problem, and you two start crying together, Praying with the Lord about that problem. And you do it week after week after week when you meet and the struggle continues, you continue praying. And after a while things start to happen. You change and you know that struggle make you different towards the problem. And the influence to the problem change and at the end God solves the problem through you many times. Sometimes by a miracle. But there's so much power in that honest relationship between people where they trust one another and they're honest with their problems and they pray together. This is discipleship. And the one helping the other one how God wants us to live here. And then things happen. There's I mean, that, that is one of the keys that I discovered more and more. This personal trust relationships based on the unity in Christ. Through the Spirit. Uh, again, Ephesians 4 about the unity as you just said. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth uh, shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose or set free on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Um, we think about the body of Christ again. We are made to work together also in prayer. We need all the gifts.
gifts and experience uh, God in the whole body of Christ. Because you don't have all the gifts. And if you really want to see God's work, you need to work with other people. You need to pray with other people. You need to link up with them. And then the gifts come together and the plan of God is revealed. But that's not just a, a superficial come together. It's a really struggle with the Lord together. With the problems. And then all the gifts come together and God reveals His plan and things are happening. And you stand amazed. I heard a guy say once... Fulfilled. I heard a guy say once that as to be a pastor of the church you have to have all the gifts. Like, it was kind of very one-sided. You know, no, it can't be. It can't be. No, it didn't make sense to me either. I was like, eh? Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that what you want? <laughs> then nobody will be pastors. There will be no pastors because there's nobody with all the gifts. I had a continuation of that sermon somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, it was in the um, church called Revival Worships. Is in there. I was a charismatic longer, and so um, the guy preached that uh, um, God um, chose some people to have all the gifts, mm -hmm. and these are the people that should be called apostles. That that's their title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Eventually, he refers to that. Oh, does he, he in your world? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he gets there. <laughs> okay, then uh, the early church prayed together. They do. The early church prayed together. It's often prayed together in groups. You will see it everywhere. The house churches, they came together. They prayed in the name of Jesus. The Christians of the New Testament often prayed together. They prayed together began in the first chapter of Acts. Jesus had told them to leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came upon them. So they remained together waiting for this and they said pray for it. So they prayed together. Um, you can see how doubt is also diminished um, less when a group is praying. Because mm. you are living through the faith of the others around you also. Mm. You experience it, you are in encouraged by it and things happening. That's so that's what they call the congregation. It's not the congregation in our minds today. It's the congregation, the body of Christ working together. Acts 4. Um, what did the Christians do when they were commanded to preach about Jesus again? Um, and they pray together. Um, they ask God to give them boldness to preach because the, government, the, the leader said they are not allowed to preach. They ask him to do miracles in the name of Jesus. I mean, all, not only these problems, but so many problems and challenges that are for you. Like Peter was in prison. He have learned how the church prayed strongly for him. And then the angel came and opened the doors and he walked out. And at the end, <laughs> they were surprised. <laughs> Where are you coming from? Who is not? It can't be him. And he came to the door, but they just prayed for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, yes! Imagine that. How's that for a prayer answer? <laughs> it's like, oh, Peter! And there's so much humor in it. How God yeah. teaches yeah. us. It's true. Pray. It happens. Yeah. Don't be surprised. Sure. You see that the early church often prayed together in groups. The church in Antioch sent out some missionaries and then they first prayed. They said while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, they were worshipping and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart from your brother and sure. soul for the work for which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. God speaks and then they don't just do the thing that they want to do. They, they still pray about it. And they are fasting about it. And say, this is an important thing. We heard the, the Lord talking to us. And they still prayed and, and laid their hands on them and sent them off. It's amazing sometimes what just that laying of hands on somebody, the, the, what happens there. 
and the feeling you get when other people trust you for a task for the Lord. And they came together. That relationship and things are, there are so much more in it than we think. And that's what we are missing, missing in, in our culture today, that deep relationships with these things happening. Three, they three pray together for great needs. When the church has problems, as soon as its people saw their need, they prayed. Um, it's just a natural reaction if you know the Lord. We should not just come to church to sing and hear preaching. We should come to order to pray together. We should meet together for special prayer where there are great needs. Um, we do not live out of our structures and rituals and customs, but out of prayer, out of our relationship with God. That's, that's guiding us. Um, um, and um, Yes, the structures and the rituals and the customs can support us in that also, but we're not living from that. We're living from the prayer and the relationship. Um, so when there's problems, we turn to prayer. Matthew 23, verse 14. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for your, for your devil widows, uh, devour, <laughs> devour widows, house, houses and forum pretends you make long prayers. Therefore you will receive the greater condemnation or judgment. Now they make prayer. This amazing thing something to show off. Um, and you can see <laughs> it's really not the That's not the first time Jesus tackled that thing. He tackled that thing in a synagogue as well. He yeah. said to them, watch out for these herbs of praying on the street corners. He, had, he, he, he was quite serious about prayer. You see how this amazing thing, prayer, how the Satan can make a good thing into a bad thing. So quickly. Yeah. So that it looks like the angel of the light. He's praying. <laughs> and immediately you feel good about it. Mm -hmm. But actually he's breaking down this relationship with God instead of building because it's not true. <laughs> the it's not um, true prayer. One of the um, things of Islam that they have in their favor in terms of um, their efficiency to um, convince others to become Islamic is because their um, religion is very visible. People are able to see it. They're able to see out oh, there that a person goes to pray. Mm. Um, there that a person um, wears the Islamic clothing. So it's a very visible religion. Um, and Christianity, for the most part, has become a very invisible religion. Um, nobody knows who the Christians are, and nobody knows when the Christians are doing uh, something. Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think, um, in a certain sense, there is a um, 99% of the Christianity should be under uh, cover. Um, but it's sad if the world doesn't see Christianity mm -hmm. at all. But at the same time, we should not be bragging about, uh, about it, so it's, it's difficult. You should be able to um, keep yourself 100% humble um, and uh, most your attention should be in the se uh, secret parts, um, in, in the closet. Um, so I think it's, it's something to pray about, about to ask, oh God, how he wants us to make his religion visible. It will become visible. It will definitely become visible. Even if it's not you praying, the results of it will become visible. Yeah. Because as the Lord say, he hears what you pray there in secret and he announces it is from the roots. Mm. It happens. And uh, uh, the thing is, I've seen this thing because um, uh, I followed I followed God um, with uh, as much as I'm uh, able to with my shortcomings and so forth. Uh, and I've seen with other people it's the same. 
yeah. with your total inability. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've I've seen many. Uh, then uh, there's things that I do in common society that I have to do it that way because I'm a Christian, and then everybody sees it. Um, and so um, I've decided. I've decided I'm not going to. Uh, it's become too much effort to hide myself in society, so people see the way I do or do see things. Um, um, it's not um, so. It's an honest and true relationship. It will show sometimes and sometimes not. Yeah. It's not in your hands. I mean, sometimes you need to tell somebody boldly. This is what I believe. This is what is the truth. Yeah. Um, and other times you don't. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> like your brother. My brother's not a believer, but he also noticed that the Islamic people yeah. are queer. He says those guys play so much. They would just strap a bomb around their waist. If you are real in your relationship, it will show in your relationship to people. Yeah. Yeah. They will see and they will feel it, and they will <coughs> they will know um, and ask later on. Um, and then the other thing they say also, don't preach in your prayer. Don't tell people your theology in your prayer. Um, I mean, that's not a prayer. Preaching is not a prayer. <laughs> you get people who want, he's, he's trying, what he couldn't tell you, he tell you in the, through his prayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's talking to you, not to God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the people yeah, yeah. who listen. I mean, yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, uh, you, I don't have to talk about that. I think you understand that. Mm. And it's a real danger. This thing goes deep. Um, mm. I catch myself so many times when I pray. What am I doing? Yes, I want him to hear this. But I should not pray it to, for him to hear it. Mm. Um, I should really go and, and talk to the Lord. In any case, so be careful of that because it happens so easily in my life. In any case, I, I, I catch myself many times that I, I'm not really talking to the Lord. I want the people to hear what I pray now. Um, and you can test it if, 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 if you feel like keeping quiet in your prayer. You know it will be uncomfortable for the group. But that's why it is. I mean, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you feel obligated just to pray because you've got yeah. all these eyes on you. you know? And now you're uh, thinking, what will I say now? Sure. And then you start saying things that you... Okay, let me just pray the scripture. <laughs> yeah, maybe that helps. Yeah. 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 You understand that it's so easy to fall in that hole. That We're talking about just want to be still and listen. Yeah. And it must be a true relationship with God. Mm. Um, otherwise it's not. They prayed together. Did you see that they not only prayed for their weekly meetings, they had special prayer meetings for special needs. They prayed when asking for the Holy Spirit to come. They prayed when the rulers told them not to preach. They prayed when their leaders was in jail. They prayed when they were sending missionaries. They were for the special needs and the special. They come together and pray together. Not only on specific times, like our sermons. I don't think they they had these specific times always. Where is the start of the, the Church of Acts? Yeah, yeah. I mean they, they yeah. gathered on Sundays to celebrate God's uh, as risen from the dead. Yes, but I mean they uh, no, most of their prayer meetings were for specific things. <laughs> if I read it correctly, Acts is how God worked through them. It's not. Um, so, yeah, and uh, depending on um, so the other persecution is, there might have been time frames where they did not um, yeah. meet on regular intervals. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, God hears united prayers. Therefore, the family should pray together. Brother, sister, or family, or the people that you are living with closely, close relationship people. Family should pray together every day in order to learn to pray, to get along well together and grow strong in faith. I mean, you, 
whatever your close relationships are. Um, you, it's an ex place of, that's your school of relationships, because that's your close relationships. That's where you exercise real faith and honesty um, and forgiveness and prayer in, in those people who are close to you. Um, but the church can never take the place <coughs> of the home. Some people think they can leave the teachings of the school teachers and church leaders, but they are very wrong. If parents do not teach children before they go to school, the teachers will have a hard job. Families are the school, it's a Christian school. Um, uh, close relationships. Some families look different than others, that's why I'm saying it. But that close relationships, practice it there, encourage one another and teach the young. Um, uh, we can talk a lot about that. And then the last one, day five, make a small prayer group. Um, there's an, still another group who is good to pray. This is a small group when you call together just for prayer. A good way to pray for special needs is by starting a small prayer group. And uh, sometimes, <laughs> if you do this good, this becomes the family of many people. Because that's where the closest relationships that they will ever encounter and the most honest relationships they will encounter in a group like that. That will become <coughs> their family. Well, the early church were home groups, so they were like a family. So they, yeah. they did things like a family. And, yeah. Some of the and other people were chucked out of their homes because of their faith. Yeah. So they were forced to live with others. So it was quite a... Like in those times, I mean, how many people here today come from strong families? Not many. There are more than around 53% of all children in the schools in our area here mm. that's coming from broken families. Yeah, the church will be the reflection yeah. of a good family. So these groups are sometimes crucial in creating an atmosphere of Christianity in a community. Mm -hmm. So don't underestimate them, but they are so dangerous also. If they, if they are selfish or if they are, um, you do it to gain something or if you can do it correctly, safe, honest, loving one another for with and, and calling. You cannot do it without a call. The group needs a calling. You cannot come together without a calling. You will die if you're not doing something together. Because you cannot just look after one another forever no. without a reason. No, no there should no, be a reason. I mean, no. the calling is the heart of, of everything that we do. Because God is a love the world. So you said so to expect there. the harvest. <laughs> so I mean, if, but if you do this this small group prayer group well, and everyone, any one of us can start it because there's a need. Okay. There's a need for things like this. No, I'm sitting here now realizing the, the need is actually vast. Amazing. <laughs> it's, 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 it's vaster than what we think. And for people to experience true relationships, they, they are uh, in big need for that. The prayer should not be long. Let me just say, in a group like that, because immediately if there's long prayers, mm. sometimes you know what happens. You lose track. Each person should pray for one thing at a time. If the prayers are short, it is easier for others to follow. They just give practical things also to mm. help in groups like that. And keep your eyes open if there's a place where you may be. And people who, who are seeking. Um, not only for them to find something, but to get in. The biggest thing you can teach somebody else is to be involved in helping someone else. Because that gives meaning. If you just give him the answer and give him the answer and give him the answers, he, he, at the end, he, he needs from the beginning 
know that it's worthwhile to do something for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, and prayer is something doing for somebody else. Because through prayer and commitment in your thing, the people you are praying for, because you are a group, you take one another accountable. And you keep on praying for somebody. And you're fighting that person later on gets involved in that relationship. That will happen. And something will happen. He will not only pray, he will start doing also. And that, that gives meaning to the group also. Because we are not there for ourselves. But in giving we are growing. So I just want to emphasize it that because prayer is a nice way of starting it. Mm. Because you immediately if you pray for something like you are praying for elections. You're praying for something, you have a purpose. Mm. That's not yourself. But you are growing through doing something. Um, that's the secret of Christianity, I and mean, you're growing by giving, <laughs> yeah, like Christ. The prayer should not be long. Okay, that we, if our, your friends live too far away to meet every day, then you meet once a week. Okay, these are practical things. Um, but yeah, I, I think regular meetings. You can even have a group that meets once in a month, and it can meet a lot of people. Um, but agree to pray for your need every day and through the time. And you, when you come together, you share what you've prayed and what you feel. And you find one another because you're praying for the other one. In this way, you will be praying together even when you are not needed. Um, and then there's again a few questions that you can look at if you can get the feeling for it. Because it, it's from different contexts. They use different contexts because they know that all of the students are coming from different contexts also. Um, this one is a story. They say the, the person who wrote the story down was Eileen Laguerre, and uh, it is from the New Life for All teaching that began, that's day two, the story of day two. Um, all teaching was. Uh, th that this new life of all teaching was beginning in Nigeria. There was an old man named Makafu who wanted to help with the work, but he was old and blind and could not leave his house. He could not go out and preach, but he could pray. He decided to ask the leaders to give him names of those who would not listen to the message. He would pray for them in a special way. It's amazing what they did. The leaders agreed to bring names to him. In the end, they brought him the names of 11 men. These were the people who were hard in their hearts, the ones who won't come to the studies also, and did not seem, seem that they would repent. Makafu prayed for them faithfully day by day. He was alone in his house, not able to see or to walk. But he prayed for these people one by one by their names. Months passed. I mean, that's, that's, I'm admiring people who can do that. Day by day for months praying for 11 names, which maybe he don't even know what. <laughs> Makafu must have felt discouraged at times, but still he prayed. Then the prayers began to be answered. Can you imagine how he felt when one man he was praying for came to visit him? The man did not just come to talk. And remember, this is the hard-hearted ones. He came to ask Makafu to pray for him. And he prayed himself that his sin would be forgiven. After that, another of the men came, and another, and another. Before a year passed, every one of the eleven men came to Mafukafu's small house. They prayed and received the life in Christ. Would you be willing to pray for the hardest man in the village as Makafu did? Would you continue to pray for a year until all of them repented? This is the kind of prayer that God answers. 
As you think about this answer, remember someone in your village who has a hard heart. He refuses to listen to preaching about Christ. It seems he could never repent. Perhaps your faith is small as you think about it. But remember that faith like a little seed can do miracles. Think about this verse, and then he gives Matthew 17, 20. Truly I say to you, if your faith is a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. I'm not going to read all the stories, I just decided to read one of them. Mm -hmm. I think you can, you understand why they are here. Mm -hmm. Um, but if we have time left, you maybe you can tell us one of your sto or stories from Mozambique. Um, I think I will tell a few of them in the mission. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I will uh, okay. tell yeah, a few of them there, right. because the time won't allow now. But right. we will talk about I will <coughs> share a few of them. Um, let's do them the last week, week 10, the Lord's Prayer. There's another one. Of course, why would there be nine? Where in the Bible do you find the Lord's Prayer? The Gospels. That's right. Matthew, Matthew 6. My version. Remember this passage in the Bible? It's always good to, to remember the Lord's Prayer. I love to refer to the Lord's Prayer. Um, there's so much in it. Um, and they ask you, have you memorized the Lord's Prayer? I think most of us can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're in the group. Sometimes people just repeat it without thinking. Uh, but it's really a special prayer. It's, it's, a, it's a teaching. It's a prayer for, uh, to teach us how to pray. From Christ Himself. Our Father who art in heaven, it starts with this. Um, this tells us to whom we are talking when we pray. Immediately, as we said, if you pray, start with God. Um, immediately, it's about God, where He is, um, and uh, Allah be thy name. If you say, Hallowed be thy name, you say something about him. This tells us whom we are talking when we pray. Tells us how we should feel about him. We can call him our Father only if we have believed and repented. If you are a child of God, um, you can call him Father. Um, and then where he is, he's in heaven. Write some things about God himself which can we can praise him for. Because this next one um, is, we can praise him for things like his great power, his great wisdom, that he is everywhere, that he never changes before asking things. Because um, the first thing that we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's the praise that they refer to. So, by, and by saying that is that praise is a good way also to put your mind on God and start with Him in your prayer. Um, we should praise God first. And then we get to day two. And then the second thing you ask is, let your kingdom come. Let thy kingdom come, Matthew 6.33, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. From this verse, what should we want more than anything else? <laughs> it, it, it's a mindset change if you, if you talk, think about what you want in life and the things that you want to tell him and ask him. And put the mindset to say, let, let's start with the kingdom. Let the kingdom be first. And immediately you know it's you that needs to change, not God. <laughs> and, and that's a good place to start your prayer.
And the kingdom is prophetic. I mean, we're calling for this millennial reign, this kingdom that he's promised. Kingdom. Kingdom. It's an act that's part of this complication thing. Uh, the body of Christ is uh, his kingdom. His will be done here as in heaven. Because where is where is his will be done? In heaven. Mm -hmm. Let it be in earth the same. So you bring his will down to earth, that's what needs to mm. what's going to happen. Um, let your kingdom come. Not the cloud. The will be done. <laughs> and then you ask, give us our this day our daily bread. Um, why should we ask for every day's bread? Um, uh, we should ask for food, but food is not the only thing we ask for. Food reminds us of all the things we need for our bodies. Our Father cares about all these things. He gives us the things that we need. Um, you see, this, it comes close to that point where we say, um, uh, we, we need to be to know and trust Him to fulfill us and talk about the, our position um, out of a position with Him um, and we, we, so that we can be more effective. Um, okay, then let us continue. What are the things that we need? What are the real things that we need? And it's not always the things that we want. What are the real things that we need? Um, um, and uh, yeah, and then we get the, the day four, three. Forgive us our debts. If you want God to forgive our debts and sins, we must forgive other people, as we forgive our trespasses. Why do they say it? Um, hmm. Our debtors. Forgive our debtors. Okay. Somebody gave me a loaf of bread. I was on Friday, I've been talking with mm. a group of people that are getting involved with me in the ministry. That, and his wife prayed for me. She gave me a, a loaf of bread and told me that the Lord said, It will be my daily bread. Mm. And it was quite, it was quite yeah, something. Yeah. She gave me the loaf yeah. of bread. <laughs> you see, one of the things that we really need is, is, is to be cared for, to feel accepted, um, mm. to be part of something, to have an identity. Um, and we, we know where that is coming from, but many times it's through people that we learn it and that we experience it. And that relationship refers to our relationship to Him and Him. Mm. So, and we love acceptance, those abstract things. That we're looking, we have a materialistic mindset in the West. Mm. It's very interesting if you look in Africa. Africa don't have a materialistic um, mindset in this sense. The reality for them is not the material things. The reality for them is the spiritual things that you can't see. Um, it's a spiritual world. Um, even your body doesn't exist. Uh, doesn't, and we say the only things that we can touch exist. But they say um, that's nothing. That doesn't exist. The real things you cannot touch. And they live out of that reality. That's the mindset and the worldview. And we lack sometimes that part in our relationships. There are much more than the materialistic things in this world. And we are looking for the materialistic things, the food and the things we can touch that we need. Um, but we need much more than that. We need the relationship things, the caring things, the, the, the uh, be accepted, be one with others, and, and so on, that makes you live. Um, so, 
uh, yeah, it's just for interesting sake. Mm. Um, we will talk a lot about the world views in, in Africa also. Um, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted behind your, beyond your strength. But with the temptation will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Um, okay. Um, okay, then, uh, yeah. And then at the end, I'm just going quickly through it. You will see the different parts if you read through it of the prayer. We, we, you can say a lot more about the Lord's Prayer. Um, uh, but they don't go very deep into it. And, uh, I will leave it like that, but read through it. See the different parts. See the, 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 how, you, the, how you start with talking about your relationship with the Father and then who he is, and then his will and his kingdom first, and then um, uh, the needs that you need to be effective in his kingdom, um, not for yourself, but for his kingdom, and then to be protected, um, and, and then at the end, uh, thine is the kingdom, the glory, and at the end of the Lord, those words is praise again. We will learn the kingdom, the power, and the glory belongs to God forever. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. And this is, I mean, these three words say a lot. Belongs to God forever. Um, that is a giving over. You give yourself totally in His hands if you say that. And then, Amen. That what means let it be so. Okay. So if you they say something about all three of them, but uh, only the basic things, and then how many to close the the. the, the uh, the Lord's Prayer. Just let me read it again, the whole prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.